Hey everyone, uh, my name is Zola and I'll be presenting um, on behalf of Mama Lali. It's a little background. Mama Lali was founded by myself and my partner, her name is Ngapide, so it's female-led. Um, we're both ex-Youth Member Leadership Fellows and we're also graduates of the African Drone and Data Academy. My friend is actually an instructor at the Drone and Data Academy and uh, Youth Member Stroke Aviation Maps Ambassador. I am an instructor at the University of Malawi and I am a graduate research assistant at West Virginia University. So our mission for Map Malawi was to create, engage and work with youth-based communities to create open space geospatial data using geospatial technology to contribute towards addressing local developmental and humanitarian issues. So before I start, um, this is our first project under Map Malawi, so I know you have a lot of questions, just ease up on the questions. <laughs> yeah, it's our first project. It's still a learning process for us. We're learning at each stage, and we're hoping that we have more projects after this one. So the Daleka Refugee Camp is one of the biggest camps that we have in Malawi. Ideally, it was supposed to house about 10,000 people, but it has more than 43,000 people at the moment. Um, the software update showing, I don't know. Sorry, yeah, there's a Zoom show, okay. Sorry. Um, so with the increasing demand of the already inadequate resources, we thought we should map this out, like what does it look like on the map, and with the increasing number of refugees around the world, we thought this is something that we need to address. So um, the project itself was funded by Facebook's humanitarian open street map team's um, community impact grant. And I don't know if she's here yet. I think she's presenting after me. The person that actually, the person that mentored us through the process to apply for our first grant and get it is right here. She's presenting after me. So the aim of the project was to ge generate geospatial data to highlight the provision of basic needs at the refugee camp. How we're going to integrate, well, we integrated drones, open street map, and other geospatial technologies <laughs> to map out centers of basic needs access. So health, education, water and sanitation and buildings. Originally we were going to do housing but we understand because of privacy and security risks we decided just to map them out as buildings and didn't demarcate any residential areas around the camp. So basically these are the tools and the technology that we use and it also almost looks at our timeline on like how we do everything. So we started collecting uh, with collecting imagery, drone imagery. I'm not the drone expert, my partner is, so any drone related questions, I don't know the answers to that. Uh, yeah, so we knew that the area is so congested, so using imagery that doesn't have very high resolution wasn't going to help us effectively map the area. So one of the first things was we contacted um, the relevant authorities so that we should get access to fly around the area and then you collect the journey imagery. We created a task on the tasking manager and I think some of you here actually helped us map this for coordinated mapping. We mainly used idea data but eventually more people that are experienced mappers came in with GeoSM. Um, Cobo Collect was also used for participatory GIS and our idea was also to use QGIS for the final analysis and map output. So youth involvement is something that we take, um, it's one of our main priorities because when we were introduced to geospatial technology during our university times, it wasn't all the time where we would find organizations that were willing to work with youth. You had to have five years of experience, ten years of experience, regardless of the fact that we know that some of these situations are actually learning experiences for us. So we said if we ever start anything, we're going to bring in the youth and put them at the center so that they can start the experience with us and they can use that experience to go to the organizations that they want. So we wanted to strengthen technological capabilities and encourage young professionals to creatively use geospatial technology to address different issues in their communities. We, um, we involved two groups. So as we said, we are graduates of the African Drone and Data Academy, so we involved other graduates from the Drone and Data Academy who also happened to be graduates from different universities around Malawi. And we thought, if we're involving the youth, why don't we involve the youth that stay in the camp? They have more knowledge. And regardless of the 
fact that they're there, it doesn't remove the fact that they're still knowledgeable, they're still, they have so much potential, and they're capable of gaining the skills. So they just happen to find themselves in those situations and willingly. Then we say, you know, let's, let's engage them. So there was this um, tech lab called Tech and Lab within the refugee camp that already works with different youth who live within and around the area. We contacted them, so they gave us a number of people that we started to work with. Again, um, why community involvement? As I said, we acknowledge that regardless of the situations that different people around the world find themselves in, it doesn't remove the fact that they're knowledgeable, they're skilled, they're professionals, and they're capable of doing the same work that the rest of us have the privilege of doing because we, we can move around, we're not in that situation. So we felt that involving that will make them feel acknowledged and valued as well. We thought just generally involving the community while creating maps of that community makes them feel seen and heard and that their voices are also being contributed because there are times when we go into communities and map out areas using our understanding and our perspective of what their reality is without involving the people that live there every day. So we were avoiding that and as I said, value. We thought they should feel valued, but we also thought that they were also bringing value to our project because it's a very congested area. You can see a building, you would assume it's something that it's not. So involving them made it easier for us to identify those different situations better. And empowering them as well to say, okay, we acknowledge this, that you can do this, but also to empower them to say, you know what, yeah, let me not give up on what I would have possibly done if I was in this situation. If I'm able to do this with this project, when they leave, then definitely we can also have our own projects within the camp to do that. So community training and impact, we trained 46 people in, on mapping with ID editor, two of our volunteers and 25 people from the camp. So the 25 people are people that come from different countries and now they're living at the camp. They were introduced to drone technology. We thought that children just want to take the images. They should also have a sense of how drones work and everything. So my partner did offer training and classes for drone technology to the refugees that live in the area. And two more people also trained on how to collect data using Cobo Collect. The feedback that we got from them was that, um, apart from the high resolution imagery, but they expressed that they were enlightened um, on how they can help the communities, the places that they live every day, the few resources that they have, how can they help themselves to find maybe solutions to other things. One of the things that they had mentioned was the need for a marketplace and they said they're going to use OSM to map out or to highlight that need and the need for electrification around the camp as well. Um, so during the project we made over 16,000 new edits in the area, and now the project is completely mapped and validated. Over 120 people from around the world contributed. So we had the OSM Africa community that contributed during a mapathon that um, Malawi had hosted that month. The Taleka mapping community, it was, it was amazing how some people who were living at the camp their names were actually like one of the top contributors. So you could see how empowered they were with the project. And they, they started to make it feel like it's their own. They owned it. So they, really, they were really committed to making sure that the mapping goes on. And obviously our map Malawi volunteers and the hot data interns also reached out to us and they used this as one of the tasks that they validated during their work. And obviously the overall OSM community around the world. We got a lot of, as we're saying, it was our first project, so there were some hiccups on the project and got very lengthy commentary on the project on what we should change and permissions and everything. So we appreciate that. It was, it was a learning process for us as well. So this is just like an image of um, basically the orange areas, all the mapped buildings in that area. Unfortunately, um, I can't, um, I can't present a lot of imagery because of privacy issues, so that's why I don't have a lot of visuals. Yeah, so the orange area is all the buildings. Most of our changelets were actually buildings. 
as you'd imagine. So the orange area is all the buildings that are mapped to the area. And the blue ones are buildings that we either added as new buildings or maybe edited under the project. So you can see the impact of the data that was generated there. As much as most of our mapping was buildings, as we said, our aim was to show the provision of different needs. So these are the facilities that we were able to map out. So 23 schools, five clinics, one police station, 47 water points, and 27 toilets or sanitation stations. And this collection of data was actually done by the people that we had trained at the camp. UNHCR reached out to us after they found out about the project and they asked us to give them the imagery and they're now using it for decongestion activities around the camp. Um, the lessons that we learned is that community involvement makes the dream work, whether it's just within the area that we're working in, but even outside, we learn, we grow, and the accuracy of the information that we get by involving the community. Quicker adaptation, when we're giving in our proposal, everything was going to be in person, but COVID happened, we weren't able to go into in person, so um, yeah, this is really for maybe the youth that also want to have a project, but they think they have certain barriers, you adapt and somehow it really does work. And yeah, so the cost of GIS technologies and the internet are uh, a significant barrier to entry, but the moment you figure that out, I think things work out. So yeah, um, what's next? Right now, as much as our project plan said, um, we're supposed to do an analysis. To be honest, we haven't done an analysis. We're currently just data creators who have given our data to UNHCR and we're also reaching out to other stakeholders because we want to make sure that at least our analysis is in line with what the stakeholders' needs are. So we're working towards that and we're still learning on how to reach out to stakeholders. We're, we're trying. It's, it's not the easiest thing to get them to reply to an email. So yeah, that's, that's what we're doing right now. Thank you.